I'd like to say a few words about the tendencies of surgical treatment and the treatment uh, of uh, these patients. If we are talking today about patients suffering from uh, the ovarian cancer, it's a problem, huge problem, not only for our country, uh, the problem for the whole uh, world, asymptomatic cause of the disease, uh, the absence of the screening, lead to the fact that we see 70% of patients with advanced cancer. If we are talking about possible treatment, it's a combined treatment, first and foremost. A combined treatment that involves not only the use of different effective uh, uh, subs uh, medical substances, but a site, uh, uh, but debulking surgery that in many situations is combined multi-organ interventions. It relates to the fact uh, that uh, the symptoms of this disease, localization is uh, in the abdomen, it's uh, all the it's, uh, lymph nodes, uh, the colon, the small uh, intestines, mesenterium, the diaphragm, and the uh, amentum and peritoneum. Now the standard uh, that is defined recently has been defined recently for surgical treatment. It's a uh, uh, complete or optimal site reduction. Now we are talking about effectiveness of surgical treatment when the residual tumor is less than one centimeter. This is the volume of residual tumor, in fact, it defines the effectiveness of the treatment of these patients. Because our German colleagues showed that residual tumor is the independent prognostic factor that defines the prognosis and oncological effectiveness of uh, the treatment. It's been shown that patients without residual tumor, oncological results much higher and overall survival of these patients, uh, regardless of the advancement of the disease, amounts to more than 60 months. Uh, so the complete uh, debulking, uh, it's a very important prognosis factor. Uh, that uh, increases uh, the overall survival. If we look at this data, uh, the absence of the residual tumor is a prognostic very important component. The surgical technologies to achieve this goal, uh, they are um, quite extensive, difficult. It's, uh, the surgery. Uh, in and we take into account not only the disease itself, but uh, their capability of a patient to tolerate this surgical treatment. It's of course uh, the volume of operation, not only peritoneum ectomy, but multi-organ visceral resections and lymph dissection. Uh, the price of this surgery for this surgery is not easy. It relates to perioperative uh, mortality complications. Unfortunately, it's uh, the surgery that requires a certain status of our patients. If we look at the volume of site reductive interventions, debulking interventions, they include the different multi-organ interventions. To achieve the goal, it's important to take into account some preoperative criteria that will allow to forecast uh, the effectiveness of debulking. It involves uh, the age, uh, the disease manifestation, uh, the optimal debulking intervention either primary surgery or interval site reduction. It's assessment of uh, the disease itself. One of these methods is diagnostic laparoscopy that allows to assess 
the peritoneal cancer index PCR. Uh, this uh, sugar baker scale, and uh, mostly uh, we introduce a resectability index during lab laparoscopy that uh, Anna Fagotti suggested. Uh, we can assess uh, the disease in different parts of the abdomen. Uh, this uh, index of peritoneal cancerematosis less than 10 allows us to perform optimal debulking surgery. But maybe the most important achievement, uh, the most important application of this index that in more than 30% of cases, the use of this method allows to avoid explorative laparotomy for these patients and uh, optimally to start uh, medication therapy. The method has been introduced into practice. Undoubtedly, it allows to improve uh, the diagnosis together with uh, the visualization modalities. Of course, uh, there are some specific features. Some parts of the abdomen, uh, they are poorly visible and poorly accessible for surgery. Next point is approach, surgical approach. Now we are talking about uh, the surgical surgery. Uh, to guard against the residual disease. Specific types of approaches, it's laparotomy uh, that improves uh, the examination of uh, the abdomen. Here we can see some technicalities of this operation. This is uh, the methods of the traction of the skin sutures. Today, the surgical treatment of urine cancer, we should uh, recollect the uh, Hudson technology that allows uh, retroperitoneal and block to do cytoreduction. reduction. Uh, the key point of this approach is identification of the uterus that is a kind of a guideline. All in all, peritonectomy of the minor pelvis. It's uh, how site reduction is done. Usually we resect uh, the rectum. Technically, it allows to improve the debulking effect. Uh, then we form sigma recta anastomosis. Uh, we use circular strips. Sometimes we add some additional sutures to improve uh, the quality of anastomosis. Amenectomy, in case of advanced uh, its uh, forms, it's amenectomy, not only along the transverse column, but along uh, the greater curvature of the uh, stomach. Today, uh, to achieve this goal, uh, we remove uh, the peritoneum along the diaphragm diaphragmal surface of the liver and removal of the peritoneum uh, from subdiaphragmal part. The important point, of course, is debulking within the minor amentum. It's important to preserve the vessels uh, that feed the stomach, uh, right and left gastric arteries, and some criteria of non resectabilities are um, tumors are more than two centimeters. 
uh, the excision of the visceral metastasis of the small bowels. It's quite frequent procedure is done by the sharp technique. It allows to improve uh, site reductive effect in case of advanced cancer. I am not going to talk in details about lymph uh, uh, adenectomy because uh, existing randomized trials showed the effectiveness of this surgical phase in patients with a clinical, um, clinically manifested metastasis. In this case, site reduction should be added, uh, should be enhanced by the removal of the metastatic lymph nodes. The quality of operation in case of ovarian cancer uh, can be done only by the experience and qualification of any medical establishment. It's shown that in specialized centers, more than 70% of patients, they are patients uh, uh, that uh, surgical treatment is accompanied by full and optimal site reduction. The surgeon plays an important role here. Centers, uh, when there is a team uh, with a large experience, of course, uh, the survival, overall survival, quite effective. And they enhance the opportunities for our patients. Who should do the operation, perform the operation in case of ovarian cancer? Of course, we are talking about surgeon qualifications. We are talking about uh, the uh, medical centers. They define and they influence the results uh, that can be achieved only by a teamwork, multidisciplinary team. Today, it's a difficult surgery. It's a difficult search for an effective treatment. It defines effectiveness and the results of the overall survival of our patients. On the other hand, today, effectiveness of the treatment of the advanced ovarian cancer, it's a multimodal approach. And first and foremost, the ideology of this is to assess the opportunity for pool site reduction we are dependable on morphological verification, and of course, we can see the prospects uh, in the development of molecular and uh, genetic diagnosis. And uh, the first presentation, our colleague Anna Fagotti and our friend has made this. We would like to show our large and friendly multimodal team that gives us uh, the chance to implement, to develop, and we hope to be successful in treating this category of patients. Of course, uh, the primary cytoreductive operations with the following chemotherapy is a standard for treatment of the patient. Its advantages for this category of patients. Undoubtedly, macroscopic full resection of tumor should be the goal of the primary operation. The better prognosis are the patients without visible residual tumor, interval subtle reductions. So they are justifiable that should be used in case of advanced disease in a high cancerematosis index. And of course, the choice of treatment for patients with the severe uh, comorbidities uh, when it's not, imp not possible to do primary optimal debulking. Thank you for your attention.